Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we're going to talk about clear communications. The United States and Russia have set up a direct line of communication over Ukraine with the goal of de-escalating tensions as, as things move along. When this is brought up, people immediately think of the red phone, you know, from Kennedy's day. It was never really read, I don't think. Anyway, um, that hotline, the D.C. Moscow hotline, it never went away. It still exists. This is something a little bit different. This is probably going to be used more for military to military communications. And it's not uncommon. We've actually talked about this type of back channel before when Trump got upset because Milley contacted his Chinese counterpart to calm things down. That's their job. Um, the The idea of people in command at that level in the military, their job is to protect the United States. Avoiding a great power war certainly falls under that. This is the same type of thing. It will be uh, used to communicate very directly between the militaries. So how could it be used? One example, right now the U.S. is, it certainly appears the United States is feeding real-time intelligence to the Ukrainian military. A lot of it they're getting from aircraft that are flying outside of the borders of Ukraine. However, if something was to go wrong with one of them and it crash inside Ukraine, the U.S. might pick up this phone and say, hey, we're sending in pararescue guys, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be 18 of them. They're going to this location, picking up the crew, and they're leaving. Do not mess with them. Something like that. Or, given the current state in, in Russia and the likelihood of rampant paranoia, uh, if the Russians were to pick up something they deemed as irregular submarine activity from the United States... They might call and say, hey, what is this? And the United States military could assure their counterpart and say, no, no, that's not what that is. In fact, those aren't even those kinds of subs. Those are something else. Um, another thing would be if Russia did engage in a lot of indiscriminate acts that were causing widespread losses among civilians, they might get a call from the U.S., you know, and the generals be like, hey, my boss has, has kind of had enough of this. You've got to tone down. And it's, in some ways, it's diplomacy, but it's very frank, military to military uh, conversations. At times, actual diplomats might be involved. But that's the, the general idea of it. Um, now, Another aspect to this is that this is something that would have to be in place before NATO got involved directly. I still don't see that as something that's occurring, and I don't think that that's an intentional step here. Um, I don't think they're leading up to that by getting this channel of communication open. But before NATO got involved directly, this would have to exist just to avoid attempt to avoid the possibility uh, of it spiraling into something that, that nobody wants. Overall, these kind of back channels, they're good. They are good. They can avoid war. They can de-escalate situations. They can turn something that could have spiraled into a war and keep it at a skirmish level type of thing. It's, it's a good move. It's something that should have happened a while ago. I'm surprised it didn't, um, but it is now in place. So anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.